On October 17, 1973, in the small town of Falkville, Alabama, newly hired police chief, 26-year-old Jeffrey Greenhall, was enjoying the night off with his wife and the phone began to ring. Greenhall picked it up. There was a lady on the other end. She was frantic and saying something about lights in the sky and she was worried about them because of the high electric power lines across the street from her house. So being the town authority that Mr. Greenhall was, he felt an obligation to go check it out. He couldn't have known it then, but that decision was going to change the rest of his life. Because apparently when you see something extraordinary, people will call you crazy. When you got the pictures to back it up, they'll fire you and kick you out of the town. Buckle up. It's a wild I was hired in in January of 1973, and this all come down in October the 17th, 1973. I had so many things going on that I, it was somewhere around the 1st of November, I resigned and I left. I, I got a, as far away as I possibly could get. What was your first thought when you seen this thing? This is an idiot was so strange it was not I mean, this wasn't real it wasn't really happening but it was happening to me but my initial thoughts was yes it was a person pulling a prank roughly how tall was this metal man it probably about my height and i'm six foot and maybe a little bigger can you best describe the way it looked to you that night? When I was a child, I used to watch a movie, Lost in Space, to some extent. Of course, there were no rubbery arms or nothing like that. Do you remember what kind of camera it was that you used that night? Uh, a Polaroid 2. Uh, we got to where that we started carrying cameras with us when we apprehended people who would always took a mug shot. What did you say to when you first got out of the car? something to the fact, howdy stranger. Uh, there was no response at all, you know. I, I didn't push my luck. At that point, I reached in and I turned the uh, blue lights on on the patrol car and seen how reflective the uh, material really was. And when I looked back up, it was moving away from me, and so I said, well, I'll just chase it down and run, or if I have to, run over it, and, and, and that didn't happen either. I didn't see the actual turn, right. because I was, I had been over, put my camera back in the car, and, and laying the photos on the console, but I, I it, it didn't, it wasn't moving like I would move. Uh, had springs on its feet or something. Was there an antenna on its head? I didn't, I never seen that until I looked at the photos real close. I mean, it was like some kind of a helmet of some sort. Right. And on top of it, there was a, uh, like a remote control antenna or something. Now exactly what did this woman say to you when she called you on the phone? She owns property close, very close to some TVA power lines. And she said that night that there was uh, a lot of uh, traffic and air under and around those TVA power lines. And what happened subsequently after this event? At first, you know, my life fell apart and my... Uh, and just everything completely fell apart. And I went back to the bare earth with nothing but my clothes. So what gives? What exactly happened with Jeffrey Greenhall and Metal Man? I think what it boils down to is just a, a series of unfortunate events. So four days prior, uh, Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson claimed that they had gotten abducted by aliens on the Mississippi River while they were fishing it. I'm going to go ahead and put some right now to show you what the alien looked like that they said uh, got them. It is very reminiscent of what we're seeing in this thoughtful metal man. So I think what happened was Greenhall probably um, got on somebody's nerves. They were just wanting to play a joke on him and it went too far. Either the fellow in the asbestos suit 
was freaked out because Green Hall was taking pictures of him. Maybe he was going to get in trouble for causing stuff to the, the power line. I don't know. It's speculation from here. I do know that whatever happened, Green Hall didn't know about it. Green Hall was not in on it. They lost, he lost his wife, his house, his friends. The reason that this is not coming out to light is because the person that was in that suit feels guilty because it was never meant to be anything like this. It was just the way that Green Hall reacted to it. it was something that is kind of eerie that you're you're in the back, the backwoods of like like the country on a gravel road and you see something like this, you know, you're, you're going to have a heightened sense of awareness. Your heightened sense of awareness is going to cause your stuff to move a little bit faster. Your brain's not going to work correctly. So what happened was just the reflections of the blue light kind of overwhelmed him. And because locals probably talked to the guy who was in the asbestos suit and the guy in the suit was laughing about it. And they were all just kind of, you know, picking at him because, you know, uh, Jeffrey Greenhall, he lives a simple life. He's not, you know, he's not stupid. He's not, you know, dumb. He's not ignorant. He plays at the age of 26. 26 he's got a lot of responsibility on him. So he's going to want to probably bust some heads and make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. He, his overreaction along with the new chief in, in charge of the town, they probably would, were thinking like, oh, this is this, this guy's a nut job. He can't can't do this. You know, he thinks that there's aliens out here. And, but if you read online, you, uh, you I put there's so many stories that said that the alien was, uh, or the metal man was uh, like four foot tall, looked like a kid, uh, that there was an alien ship that landed, that they had just have no clue what they're talking about. Everybody in the town that I've talked to that knows me has told me that it was a prank and the man does not want to come out and tell everybody who it was. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just show a blurred picture. I'm just going to let you guys know that is a, uh, he's a pillar of the community. I know that there's a lot of people going to be in the comments below uh, talking smack, saying that uh, it was an alien and it was blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You can look on there, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the pictures up, and you can see the dimensions of that suit are the exact dimensions of a asbestos fire suit. He might have had some aluminum foil or something wrapped around it, you know, it, you know, just to, to sell it. So, uh, like I said, here's the pictures of the Pascagoula alien that supposedly um, abducted Calvin Parker and uh, Charles Hickson compared to the Thoughtful Metal Man. So, I'm not... A believer in, in UFOs. I mean, I'd like for them to be real. I think it'd be kind of kind of fascinating, be extraordinary. I do believe there's aliens out in the universe visiting here. I don't know. I don't think so. If I was a betting man, I would I would have to put my money on no. That uh, they're just biases that we all have in our mind. And I'm working on a video right now that talks about all that. So um, I hope you did enjoy the video. Um, like I said, I, I worked my tail off on it. You know, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down, comment, tell me what you think. Uh, have you heard about the story? Uh, what have you heard? Uh, do you know any other cases that uh, you want me to, to look into? Because I will go into it like a savage, and I will get the information. Guys, don't forget to hit subscribe. Go ahead and hit that notification bell, like, right over here. It's, like, right over here. The subscription button's, like, right over here. Hit those. Just appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace.